Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And today I'm showing you the newest, biggest and most ridiculous upgrade that I've added to the PlayStation 5. So PlayStation unlocked the internal SSD bay last year, and with that it came support for up to 4TB drives. Now this is useful if you want to increase the 667GB of usable space without an external SSD. Plus, as more games are launching with nearly 100GB download files, the internal storage is getting used up pretty quickly. So today I'm going to be installing a 4TB drive from Corsair. This is the MP600 Pro LPX. It's got a pre-installed heatsink, impressive speeds, more space than I'll ever need and a 5-year warranty. It's actually designed and optimised for the PlayStation 5, so it's literally plug and play. Now when it comes to storing more games on your PS5, you've got a couple of options. You can either plug an external SSD into the back and then transfer the games onto the internal drive when you wish to play them, as you cannot play PS5 games from an external drive. Or you could go for one of these M.2 drives instead. This option is definitely more expensive, but it might be a little bit more convenient for you. A quick look at what the SSD needs. It has to have a Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD with a capacity of between 250 gig and 4 terabytes. Then on top of that, the read speed needs to be at least 5,500 megabytes per second. The drive also needs to physically fit inside the bay, so if you've got a drive that doesn't say it's PS5 compatible, make sure it's within these dimensions. Now fortunately, the MP600 Pro LPX does fit these dimensions and it goes above and beyond the specs required. It actually has a read speed of 7,100 megabytes per second, and technically is actually faster than the Western Digital SN850 drive that I'm taking out today. Now, if you are planning on swapping an M.2 drive for another, you will need to migrate your games first. Now, as there's only one bay inside the console, you cannot directly copy from one to the other. What I did was copy all of the games onto the internal SSD and an external SSD first. That way, when I remove the M.2 drive, I don't have to re-download the games again. Then once a new drive is plugged in, I can move them back over. But I will show you how I did that in the next couple of minutes. So to get to the SSD bay, we first need to remove the rear plate and that's the side that does not have the PlayStation logo on. If you've changed your plates already for either of the two new colours like the Midnight Black or the Cosmic Red, you'll know how to do this already, but let me show you anyway. Simply hold the top corner here and then you pull away and slide down at the same time. It will then pop right off. Now under the plate we've got the disk drive and we've got a fan, but what we're actually interested in is this little metal plate here. And this is what covers up the SSD bay. If you look closely, you can actually see this awesome design on the screw head. You've got these little PlayStation icons. Now we need to remove that single screw and we're able to actually take the cover off. So this is the drive that I've been using since August 21. This is the Western Digital SN850. And this is the 2TB version with a third party heatsink. It's being held in place with one single screw, so we simply remove that and we can slide the drive out. The first time that you install a new drive, you will have this little spacer and screw located at the top of the bay. You need to remove this and you need to place the spacer wherever you will insert the new screw for the new drive. Just make sure the spacer goes on first before you try slotting the drive in, as the drive itself will actually sit on top. So now we need to slide the SSD in, insert the original screw to hold it in place and this is what we're left with. And as the MP600 is designed for the PlayStation 5, it obviously fits perfectly. And also make sure that you reinstall that metal cover, this is important and it's something that Sony recommends. Once done, we can then refit the PlayStation 5 rear plates, line it up and press firmly until you hear a click. And that's it, we've now just added 4 terabytes in a matter of minutes. The drive I just installed does have a heatsink, but you can buy drives with and without. Then you can add a third party heatsink afterwards. It's usually cheaper to do it this way, and if you don't mind spending that extra 5 minutes sticking some pads on and attaching some plates to the SSD, this is definitely the best way to do it. That's what I did last year and I think I saved about £50. Right, so we've installed the 4TB drive and now we need to switch it on for the moment of truth to see if it actually works. And it'll also be good to see how many games we're able to install on the new drive. Okay, so the first time you turn it on, you will get this message on screen which recognises the new drive and it will of course need formatting. It will then do a quick speed test on the drive just to ensure that it's compatible. Okay, now that's done, we can go into the settings on the console and look under storage. From here, you can see that the M.2 drive is listed here and it shows the full capacity as well. So this is a 4TB drive as we already know, and it's great to see that the full 4TB are available, so that's absolutely awesome. And don't forget, this is in addition to the 667GB that we already have, so that's now a total of 4.6TB between the two, and that's excluding any external SSDs you might want to plug in. So I mentioned earlier that I'd installed all of my games on either the original PS5 storage or those external SSDs, so we need to copy those back onto the new drive. 
Now, copying the games from the internal SSD is rapid, like crazy fast. And we're actually talking less than a minute, sometimes a matter of seconds. Astro's Playroom, for example, is 11 gigabytes in size, and it took just eight seconds. While Cyberpunk at over 50 gigabytes only took 31 seconds. However, copying the games from the external SSDs were, by comparison, painfully slow. The same 50 gigabyte game took over five minutes to copy. And when moving over 1.5 terabytes of games, it took me hours to complete. In total, I moved over 70 games and two terabytes from the original drives onto the new one. But that does still leave me with just under two terabytes of available space. That's just enough for this year's new Call of Duty. The first thing that I wanted to do was check the general loading times for games that I often play. Each game was stored on the PlayStation 5's internal SSD first, booted up and tested out. Then I repeated the exact same process on the new 4TB drive from Corsair. It didn't matter which drive the games were stored on, they performed exactly the same way. That's awesome as it means that although I've installed a third party drive, we're not actually losing any performance. This wasn't a surprise, but it's still good to confirm. And I've tested loads of games over the last couple of weeks. That's including Horizon Forbidden West, Cyberpunk, Spider-Man and Call of Duty. None of these had a problem and all loaded and closed without issue. I've also not noticed any heat, fans or sound issues. I wasn't sure whether the larger drive would cause problems with the PlayStation 5 and the fans, but through dozens of hours of gaming with it, it has been perfect. Oh, and a quick tip, by default every new game that you download would automatically install onto the internal storage, so that 825GB drive. But if you go into the settings here, you can change the default location for all future PS4 and PS5 games. I used to have PS4 games go to the external drive and then the PS5 games to the M.2 drive, but now they all go to the same drive. In terms of the overall look of the PlayStation 5, well so far I've added the original midnight black plates, a matte black centerpiece from dbrand, and a little blue LED strip. This is just a sticker that goes over the white LEDs and it turns them blue instead. I don't think there are any other changes that I would like to do for the PlayStation 5 now, I think it looks pretty good as it is. But now I can guess the most asked question that I'll get about this 4TB drive. And it'd be, but why do you need it? Just delete and re-download your games again. And do you know what? It is a fair point. However, for me, it's just not that easy. My download speed where I live is 30 megabytes, which is painfully slow. This means it takes me an entire day to download games from the store. A couple of weeks ago, for example, it took me eight hours just to download Horizon. On top of that, my children use it, so there are usually, what, 10 to 15 games that I don't even need, but I also cannot delete them either. Although for the cost of this drive, you could literally buy two PS5s, which is absolutely ridiculous. Storage-wise, I think 4TB is definitely overkill. I did it so I could consolidate the 1TB SSD external drive, as well as the M.2 drive that was a 2TB. But ultimately, a 2TB drive is probably the sweet spot for most, and fortunately, the MP600 does come in all of the sizes required for the PS5. That's a 500GB, 1TB, 2TB and the 4TB drive. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. Let me know which size you would opt for regardless of the cost. Would you rather delete games or do you like the idea of having your entire library of games ready to play? Also, let me know if you want to see more PS5 and gaming videos from me. I enjoy making these and I plan on ramping up the PS5 content this year. Drop a PS5 upgrade with a blue heart in the comments if you want to see more from me. And here's another couple of videos you might be interested in watching next. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.